Introducing Better Homes and Gardens Cooking Made Microwave Easy. Meet the least understood and the most underused appliance in your kitchen, the microwave oven. Over 12 million microwave ovens are sold every year. Three out of four homes in America have one. Yet, how many of us really know how to use one? We've all baked a potato, defrosted hamburger, heated coffee, or even steamed vegetables. But when's the last time you cooked a complete recipe in your microwave? Probably never, but that's about to change. Today, you're going to learn how to cook in your microwave. We'll show you how to cook delicious family favorites. Recipes that have been tested in our Better Homes and Gardens test kitchen. From crispy microwave chicken, to old-fashioned pot roast and vegetables, to apricot bran muffins. Each recipe is designed to teach you valuable microwave cooking skills. Cooking skills that you can use in your own recipes to assure perfect results. Like tenting with waxed paper and the use of browning dishes. It's an easy and delicious way to learn. Now a couple of words about the video. Each recipe section begins with an ingredient list. A written copy of the ingredients and recipe methods are also included with this video. You'll also notice that each recipe section is followed by a nutritional breakdown and microwave cooking time comparison to conventional oven cooking time. At the end of this tape, you'll find our microminder section. It's filled with microwave cooking hints and techniques. Use it as a quick review. If your VCR has a counter, zero it here. Now you'll be cued to the start of the cooking lessons. And now, meet Barbara Simon your host for Cooking Made Microwave Easy. Hi, welcome to Cooking Made Microwave Easy. And I do mean easy. Once you learn a few basic microwave cooking skills, you'll wonder why you've waited so long. Believe it or not, most of the foods you cook in your conventional oven, you can cook in your microwave too, only a lot faster, and they'll taste every bit as delicious. Today we're going to prepare some recipes your family will love. Pay special attention to the cooking techniques we use. They're the secret to successful microwave cooking. But before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about microwave ovens and how they work. Microwaves are basically waves of energy that travel in straight lines. Just like the beam of a flashlight, microwaves lose 99% of their energy after they've traveled only 10 inches. And since microwaves can't penetrate metal, a metal box is used to contain them within a small area. Imagine billions of energy waves bouncing every which way inside your microwave. So food gets bombarded from every direction, but contrary to popular opinion, microwaves don't cook food from the inside out. In fact, they penetrate food only three quarters to two inches deep. Once they penetrate, food molecules begin to vibrate and rub against each other, and that creates heat. It's like rubbing your hands together to get them warm. Pretty simple, huh? Lots of things affect how fast food cooks in your microwave oven. The amount of food and its shape and size can affect cooking times, for example. And foods with a lot of sugar, fat, or water in them will cook faster than other foods. But one important cooking factor is the wattage of your oven. Most full-size microwave ovens produce from 600 to 700 watts. Smaller models produce 400 to 500 watts. The more watts of cooking power your oven has, the faster it cooks. And you really need higher wattage microwave ovens to cook large amounts of food or very dense food like pork chops. All of the recipes I'll fix today are for 600 watt microwave ovens or higher. So if you own a lower wattage oven, you may need to increase your cooking times. But remember, microwave cooking is fast cooking, even with a low watt oven. So increase the cooking times in small increments and check the food often for doneness. Oven wattages are usually listed on the back of your microwave oven or in your owner's manual. Look for a number between 400 and 1000. If you can't find your oven's wattage, try this simple test. Fill a two cup measuring glass with one cup of water. Heat it on high, uncovered, for three minutes. If the water boils in that time, your oven produces 600 watts or more. If it doesn't boil, you have a lower wattage oven. For all of the recipes you'll see today, high equals a cooking power of 100%. Medium is 
If you want to convert your conventional oven cooking times to microwave cooking times, your best bet is to find a similar microwave recipe and use that micro cooking time. If you can't find one, try cutting the cooking time to one quarter to one third of the conventional cooking time. Test for doneness and add more time if necessary. Okay, enough talk. Let's get started on our first recipe. Crispy Microwave Chicken. To prepare this recipe, you'll need two tablespoons margarine or butter, one quarter cup fine dry seasoned breadcrumbs, two tablespoons grated Parmesan cheese, one quarter teaspoon garlic powder, one eighth teaspoon paprika, two medium whole chicken breasts skinned, boned and halved lengthwise. You know, most people think you can't get things to come out crispy in the microwave. Well, they're wrong. It's really quite easy. You just need the right coating and a couple simple microwave cooking techniques. To prove it, we're about to make crispy microwave chicken. Start by melting two tablespoons of margarine. Put it in the microwave on high for about 40 seconds to a minute. I like to use these glass measuring cups. It's easy to see when things are done and you can do all your mixing in them. Plus, the fewer bowls I have to clean up, the better I like it. While the margarine's melting, take a shallow dish and combine one quarter cup of fine dry breadcrumbs, two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and one eighth teaspoon of paprika. We'll mix that up real well. Okay. Now, brush some of the melted margarine on the meaty side of the chicken breasts. These breasts have been skinned, boned, and halved lengthwise. Okay. Next, we'll coat the buttered side with the breadcrumb mixture. Move that around a little bit. This is going to give the chicken a nice, crisp outer coating. So remember, if you want things to come out crisp in your microwave, add a dry breadcrumb coating of some kind. And be sure to use a microwave-safe cooking rack. This rack will help keep the chicken up off the bottom of the dish. That way, steam won't build up underneath the meat, and the chicken won't sit in its own juices and get soggy. So put the rack in a microwave-safe dish. That's 12 by 7 and a half by 2 inches. And if you don't know if your cooking dishes are microwave safe, there's a simple test you can do. Just check the microminder section at the end of this tape. Now place the chicken on the rack, crumb side up. There we go. And we'll sprinkle the remaining breadcrumb mixture on the chicken. Well, just about all of it. And we'll drizzle it with the rest of the margarine. Okay. Coating the chicken on the top side only and not turning it over while it cooks will help the coating stay crisp. Now, We'll cover the dish loosely with a microwave-safe paper towel. It's important to just lay it over the edge of the dish. You don't want to seal it. The towel prevents any splattering, and it also absorbs moisture. And again, that helps keep the chicken's coating crispier. And be sure to use microwave-safe paper towels. They don't have any dyes like other paper towels that could bleed onto the food. We'll put the dish in the microwave, cook it on high for about six to seven minutes. Notice, I'm giving you approximate times. All microwaves vary slightly, so it takes a little experimenting with your own oven. Okay, our chicken's about halfway through its cooking cycle, so I'm going to give the dish a half turn. Microwave ovens have what they call hot and cold spots. Some areas get more microwaves than others. So by turning the dish, we make sure that things cook evenly. Notice I didn't turn the chicken over. If I did, the coating would get soggy. 
The chicken should be finished cooking now. A peculiarity about microwave cooking is that if you put an empty microwave dish in the microwave oven and turn the oven on, the dish would stay cool. But I'm using hot pads to remove the crispy chicken. Even though the microwaves won't heat up the dish, heat from the hot food in it can, and it may be too hot to touch. Ta-da! Crispy microwave chicken. And you said it couldn't be done. Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for crispy microwave chicken. Old-fashioned pot roast and vegetables. To prepare this recipe, you'll need one two and a half to three pound boneless beef chuck arm pot roast, cut one and a half inches thick, one 14 and a half ounce canned beef broth, two teaspoons Worcestershire sauce, two cloves garlic minced, one half teaspoon onion powder, one half teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon pepper, 12 whole tiny new potatoes, two cups Brussels sprouts halved, two large carrots cut into strips, one medium onion sliced, three tablespoons all-purpose flour. Remember when your mom simmered a pot roast for hours to make it nice and tender? Today, who has the time? Well, now, thanks to the microwave, you can make old-fashioned meals like pot roast in less than half the cooking time. Start by trimming the outside fat from a two and a half to three pound beef chuck arm pot roast. Fats and even sugars tend to cook fast in the microwave oven because they attract microwaves. For even doneness, choose a roast with a nice uniform shape and thickness. The fat marbling should be spread equally throughout the roast, or else the fatty areas will cook more quickly. In general, boneless roasts cook more evenly because large bones tend to shield the meat from microwaves. And since microwaves only penetrate three quarters to two inches, flat cuts like this pot roast work the best. By the way, if you have a low watt oven, we suggest you don't try this recipe. We found in our test kitchen that most low watt ovens just don't cook cuts of meat over two pounds very evenly. Set the roast aside. Take a large microwave safe roasting dish and combine one 14 and a half ounce can of beef broth, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, two minced garlic cloves, one half teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of pepper. Now we'll add the pot roast. And we're going to turn it over so we can coat both sides. Now this may seem like a lot of liquid, but our test kitchen home economists found that this amount of liquid really helps tenderize the meat. Okay, we'll cover and cook this on high for five minutes. That'll get the liquid boiling. Then we will cook it on medium for about 40 minutes. The slower cooking makes the meat more tender. And be sure and turn the dish a couple of times for even cooking. While the pot roast's been cooking, I've had a chance to prepare the vegetables. I have 12 whole tiny new potatoes with a one inch band cut around the middle, two cups of Brussels sprouts, halved, two large carrots peeled and cut into strips, and one sliced medium onion. If you have trouble finding any of these vegetables, try using cut up red potatoes, sliced parsnips, or more carrots. I've taken the pot roast out and turned it over, and now I'm adding the vegetables. Then cover it up again and cook it for another 20 to 30 minutes on medium until the beef and vegetables are tender. Our roast is done cooking now. I've put it, along with the vegetables, onto a warm serving platter and covered them with foil to keep them warm while I make the gravy. Here I have a four cup measure that I've poured the baking juices into, skimmed off the fat, and poured off all but one and a half cups of the juice. To this, I'll add a quarter cup of cold water and three tablespoons of flour, which I've already combined to prevent lumping the gravy. We'll stir it up. Then microwave it on high for five to seven minutes or until it gets thick and bubbly. Now we just take the gravy out, 
Pour it over the roast. And in less than half the conventional cooking time, old-fashioned pot roast with vegetables. Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for old-fashioned pot roast with vegetables. Vegetable top fish fillets. To prepare this recipe, you'll need one pound of fresh or frozen fish fillets, sole, flounder, orange ruffy, or haddock, salt, pepper, one quarter teaspoon garlic powder, one cup sliced fresh mushrooms, one half cup julienne carrot strips, one green onion sliced, one tablespoon margarine or butter, one small tomato. You know, it makes good nutritional sense to eat fish a couple times a week, and there's no easier way to cook fish than in the microwave. Vegetable top fish fillets are a real favorite of mine. Start by arranging one pound of fish fillets in a 12 by 7 and a half by 2 inch baking dish. Sole, flounder, orange ruffy, and haddock all taste great cooked like this. Notice that I folded the thin ends under. That makes each piece more uniform, and that's a key to successful microwave cooking. Foods that are the same size and thickness cook more evenly. If you didn't turn the thin ends under, they'd cook more quickly than the rest of the fillet. Also notice that I've arranged the fillets with the thickest portions to the outside of the dish. Remember, microwaves cook from the outside in, so this way the thickest pieces get penetrated first. Okay now, let's sprinkle the fillets with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Set this aside for a minute while you prepare the vegetables. You want to cook the vegetables by themselves first because they take longer to cook. If we cooked them right with a fish, you'd either have crunchy vegetables or dried out fish. So in a non-metal microwave safe bowl, combine one cup of sliced fresh mushrooms, one half cup of julienne carrot strips, one sliced green onion, and one tablespoon of margarine or butter. Now cover the bowl with microwave safe plastic wrap. Seal it tightly, but vent it by puncturing the top. This allows steam to escape. If you ever wonder whether to cover a dish or not, a good rule of thumb is, if you'd cover it in conventional cooking, cover it in your microwave oven. Now cook the vegetables in the microwave on high for two to three minutes. Remember, all microwave ovens are different. That's why these times are approximate. The vegetables are partially cooked now, so I'm spooning them over the fish fillets. Remember to spread them evenly so that they'll cook evenly. And now add a tomato that's peeled and sliced. Tomatoes have a high water content, so they cook really fast. That's why you'll want to wait till now to add them. Again, cover with plastic wrap and vent the dish by folding back one corner. Cook on high for five to seven minutes. Remember, some spots in your microwave may cook faster than others, so halfway through the cooking cycle, give the dish a half turn. You know, one way to make sure that you don't overcook things in the microwave is to take them out just when the edges are done, and then let the dish stand for about a minute until the center sections cook through. To tell if the fish is done, we'll poke it with a fork and twist gently. And if it flakes easily, it's done. Presto, vegetable topped fish fillets. What could be easier or better for you? Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for vegetable topped fish fillets. Citrus stuffed pork chops. To prepare this recipe, you'll need two pork loin chops cut one and a quarter inches thick, one quarter teaspoon finely shredded orange peel, one half cup orange juice, one third cup chopped apple, two tablespoons fine dry bread crumbs, one tablespoon chopped almonds or pecans, 1 8 teaspoon ground cinnamon, 1 tablespoon cooking oil, 1 teaspoon cornstarch, 1 half teaspoon instant beef bouillon granules. 
One disadvantage you hear more than any other about microwave ovens is that they don't brown foods as beautifully as conventional ovens. Well, with today's active cookware, browning is no longer a problem for many foods. Right now, I'm going to make citrus stuffed pork chops with the help of this browning dish. Browning dishes have a special coating of tin oxide on the bottom that absorbs microwave energy. It gets super hot to help sear, brown, stir fry, and grill food. So it's perfect for making chicken, veal, pork, and lamb chops. However, if you have a low watt oven, we don't recommend using a browning dish in it. The dish just doesn't heat up right. Okay, the first thing I'll do is trim the fat from the chops. Fat really reacts quickly to microwave energy and burns long before the meat is cooked. Next, cut a pocket into each pork chop. Cut from the fat side almost to the bone. Sprinkle the cavity with salt and pepper. Now, in a small mixing bowl, combine one tablespoon of orange juice, one third cup of chopped apple, two tablespoons of fine dry bread crumbs, one tablespoon of chopped almonds or pecans, and one eighth teaspoon of cinnamon. Mix it all up. Spoon about half of the filling into each chop. While I prepared the stuffing, I also preheated my browning dish. Just put the dish in the microwave and heat on high, uncovered, for about five minutes. And be sure and use hot pads. And don't set it down on a bare countertop because it's really hot. Now, pour a tablespoon of cooking oil on it and swirl it all around the dish to coat it. All right. Then add the pork chops. Ooh, listen to them sear. Be sure to cover the dish. It'll help trap steam so the pork will cook completely through. And you don't want grease splattering all over the inside of your oven. Cook them on high for about two minutes on each side. Okay, the chops have had a chance to brown on both sides. Now reduce the heat to medium and cook the chops for nine to 11 minutes or until the chops are tender and no pink remains. Cooking them on medium gives the heat a chance to penetrate to the center of the chops. That's important to remember when you're cooking pork. Pork is very dense meat and takes longer for the microwaves to penetrate. You must always cook pork till it's well done throughout, for safety reasons. So cook the chops slowly, be sure to turn the dish once during the cooking cycle to make sure they cook evenly, and then turn them over once too. Okay, the chops should be done now. To test for doneness, I'll just slice into one and check to make sure it's no longer pink. Ah, that's perfect. Okay, put the cover back on and set them aside while you make the sauce. In a one cup measure, combine one quarter teaspoon of finely shredded orange peel. The remaining orange juice, one teaspoon of cornstarch, and one half teaspoon of instant beef bouillon granules. Stir well to keep the cornstarch suspended while the sauce cooks. That'll help give a smoother sauce. Now cook the sauce on high, uncovered for one to two minutes or until it thickens. Be sure to stir every 30 seconds because microwaves cook from the outside in and mixing helps the sauce cook evenly. If the sauce bubbles up too much while it's cooking, stir more often. Our sauce is done now. And there you have it. Citrus stuffed pork chops, nice and brown, from the microwave. Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for citrus stuffed pork chops. Mushroom Cap Turkey Breast. To prepare this recipe, you'll need one cup chopped fresh mushrooms, one quarter cup sliced green onion, one quarter cup dry sherry, one quarter teaspoon dried basil crushed, one quarter teaspoon salt, three quarters cup soft breadcrumbs, one slice, one two and a half to three pound turkey breast half with bone, two teaspoons cooking oil, 
one quarter teaspoon paprika, one half cup sliced fresh mushrooms, one tablespoon sliced green onion, one tablespoon margarine or butter, one tablespoon cornstarch, one half cup chicken broth, one half cup skim milk. You know, turkey isn't just for Thanksgiving anymore. It's inexpensive and low in fat, and your microwave really helps cut down the cooking time. To make our mushroom cap turkey breast, start by combining, in a four cup measure, one cup chopped fresh mushrooms, one quarter cup sliced green onion, one quarter cup dry sherry, one quarter teaspoon dried crushed basil, and one quarter teaspoon of salt. Mix it all up and cook on high, uncovered, for eight minutes or till the mushrooms are tender. Turkey breasts have a large bone that shields the meat from microwaves, so you'll want to take the bone out of the turkey. If you've ever boned a chicken breast, you'll find boning a turkey breast just as easy. Use a sharp boning knife and keep its tip as close to the bone as possible while cutting. Next, rinse the turkey and pat dry. Then pull the skin away from the meat, but leave it attached at one edge. Take the mushroom mixture and spread it over the meat. Pull the skin back over and secure it with wooden toothpicks. Brush it with two teaspoons of cooking oil and a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Because turkey is so low in fat, it needs a little oil to keep from drying out. And the paprika will add color. Place it on a microwave safe cooking rack in a large shallow dish. Remember, the rack will help keep steam from building up underneath the meat and overcooking it on the bottom. All right. Just put it in here. Cover it loosely with wax paper. Just lay it on top. That way most of the steam will escape, leaving just a little to help cook the meat through. It'll also help prevent splattering. Cook for 25 to 35 minutes on medium rotating the dish at least three times. Then check for doneness and add cooking time as needed. If your microwave oven has a temperature probe, you can use it to cook the turkey. Simply set the oven for the right final temperature, 165 degrees in this case, and insert the probe into the center of the food. See your owner's manual for directions on how far to insert your probe. When the food is done to the correct temperature, the probe will automatically turn off the microwave oven. If your microwave oven doesn't have a temperature probe, you can buy a microwave-safe thermometer, like this one. Never use your conventional meat thermometer in your microwave oven. Its mercury will reflect the microwaves and you'll get inaccurate readings. The turkey's just about done now, but to make sure I don't overcook the less meaty areas, I've covered them with foil. Yes, that's right. You can use foil in many microwave ovens if you do it right. First, check your owner's manual to see if the use of foil is recommended. If it is, then just use small pieces to reflect the microwaves and cover the areas that need protection from overcooking. Be sure not to let the foil touch any of the microwave walls, and don't bend it so foil touches foil. That could cause arcing or sparks. Okay, the turkey's done. Now cover it with foil and let it stand for about 10 minutes to finish cooking through to the center and to make it easier to slice. Remember, microwaves only penetrate up to two inches, so the rest of the cooking has to come from heat transfer from the outside cooked parts. While the turkey stands, I'll make the sauce. Use a two cup measure and combine one half cup mushrooms, one tablespoon of onion, and one tablespoon of margarine or butter. Cook it one and a half to two minutes, uncovered on high. Okay, now I've stirred in one tablespoon of cornstarch, then added one half cup of chicken broth and one half cup of milk. Cook it uncovered on high once again for two to three minutes or till bubbly, stirring every minute or so. And here it is, mushroom cap turkey breast. Turkey, it's not just for Thanksgiving anymore. Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for mushroom cap turkey breast.
spaghetti squash with Parmesan sauce. To prepare this recipe, you'll need one two to two and a half pound spaghetti squash, one cup sliced celery, one half cup chopped onion, two tablespoons margarine or butter, one tablespoon all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon dry mustard, three quarters cup milk, two slices processed Swiss cheese cut up, one quarter cup grated Parmesan cheese. There's almost no better example of how much cooking time the microwave can save you than making squash. The microwave oven will cut the time by three-fourths, and vegetables love the microwave. The nutrients don't boil out, and they keep their color. So I'm going to show you how to prepare spaghetti squash with Parmesan sauce. Start by cutting the spaghetti squash in half lengthwise and scoop out the seeds. Now place the halves, cut side down, in a large, shallow, microwave-safe dish. Again, if you want to know whether your cooking dishes are microwave safe, just refer to the microminder section for a simple test you can try. Cover the squash with microwave safe plastic wrap and seal it tight. You want to trap the steam in the dish to help speed up the cooking time, but be sure to leave one corner peeled back to vent the excess steam and cook it on high for 10 to 14 minutes or till the pulp can be pierced easily with a fork. And as always, give the dish a half turn a couple of times during the cooking cycle to ensure that the squash cooks evenly. When it's done, let it stand covered while you make the sauce and that'll help assure that it cooks through. While the squash is standing, I'll make the sauce. And this is where my four cup measure really comes in handy. I can do all my mixing and cooking in one container. Mix together one cup of sliced celery, one half cup of chopped onion, and two tablespoons of margarine or butter. Cover it with waxed paper or vented plastic wrap to prevent spattering. We'll cook it on high for three to four minutes or till the onion is tender. Okay, now stir in one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon of dry mustard, and a dash of pepper. Stir till the flour is well coated. Then stir in three quarters of a cup of milk. Cook it on high for one to three minutes, or till the sauce thickens and bubbles. Be sure to stir the mixture every minute. Stirring helps move the heated outside portions to the center and the cooler inside portion to the outside. Remember, microwaves penetrate from the outside in. Then cook for another 30 seconds. Now stir in two slices of Swiss cheese cut up and a quarter cup grated Parmesan cheese. And we'll let that stand till the cheese is melt. Finally, use a fork to rake the spaghetti squash onto a serving platter. Isn't that neat looking? You know, if you can't find spaghetti squash, try pouring the cheese sauce over pasta you've cooked on top of the stove. It tastes great. Okay, now pour the sauce on. Mmm, doesn't that look yummy? Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for spaghetti squash with Parmesan sauce. Raising yeast bread dough in the microwave. Here's a trick that can really speed up raising yeast bread doughs. By the way, this works only if your microwave has a low enough power setting, around 10%. To test your microwave to see if it operates at just 10%, place two tablespoons of cold stick margarine in a six ounce glass cup. Cook it on your lowest power for four minutes. If the margarine melts in less than four minutes, don't use your microwave for raising bread dough. It'll warm the bread too fast and kill the yeast. To raise dough in your microwave oven, just fill your good old reliable four cup measure with three cups of water and cook on high for about six to eight minutes or till the water boils. Then set the water to the back of the oven and put in your bowl of dough. Set your microwave oven on low and cook for five minutes. Then check to see if the dough's doubled. If not, add one or two minutes, then check it again. 
When it's doubled, punch down the dough and repeat for the second raising. The amount of time it takes depends upon the amount of dough you're raising and the richness of the dough. It'll take a little experimenting. Bread dough raised in a microwave. It was easy and time-saving. Here are the raising time comparisons for yeast bread dough. Apricot bran muffins. To prepare this recipe, you'll need one beaten egg, one cup buttermilk or sour milk, one quarter cup packed brown sugar, two tablespoons cooking oil, one half cup whole bran cereal, one cup all-purpose flour, one and a quarter teaspoons baking powder, three quarters teaspoon ground cinnamon, one half teaspoon ground nutmeg, one quarter teaspoon baking soda, one eighth teaspoon salt, one half cup snip dried apricots. For topping, you'll need two tablespoons toasted wheat germ, two tablespoons finely chopped nuts, one tablespoon brown sugar. We've just seen that microwaves are great for raising yeast dough, but your microwave can completely cook quick breads, including the apricot bran muffins I'm going to make right now. And I'll do it five times faster than in a conventional oven. First, combine one beaten egg, one cup of buttermilk or sour milk, one quarter cup of packed brown sugar, two tablespoons of cooking oil, and one half cup of whole bran cereal. Let it stand for five minutes. In another bowl, I've mixed together one cup all-purpose flour, one and one quarter teaspoons of baking powder, three quarter teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one half teaspoon ground nutmeg, one quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and one eighth teaspoon of salt. Add this mixture to the bran mixture and mix just till it's all moist. Now we fold in a half a cup of snip dried apricots. If you cover this mixture with an airtight seal, it'll keep in your refrigerator for up to a week. They're great for breakfast. Okay, to bake them up, line six ounce custard cups or a microwave safe ring shaped muffin pan with paper baking cups. Then, spoon two to three tablespoons of the batter into each cup. If you're using custard cups, be sure to arrange them in a ring on a microwave safe dish. This gives the best chance for microwaves to penetrate the muffins evenly, from all sides and top and bottom, too. Now, since microwave ovens don't naturally brown foods, I'm adding a topping of wheat germ, two tablespoons of finely chopped nuts, and one tablespoon of finely packed brown sugar. The number of muffins you bake determines how long to cook them because the bigger the volume, the more time it takes to cook in a microwave. For six muffins, bake on high for two and a half to three and a half minutes. For one muffin, pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds. To test for doneness, scratch the surface with a wooden toothpick. The surface will be slightly wet, but the inside should be done. Remove the muffins from the pan and let them stand on a wire rack for five minutes. That'll give the moist surfaces a chance to dry. The next part is easy. You eat them. Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for apricot bran muffins. Mississippi Mud Sauce. To prepare this recipe, you'll need three quarters cup sugar, one third cup unsweetened cocoa powder, one five ounce can evaporated milk, two thirds cup, one quarter cup chunky peanut butter. If you have a large sweet tooth like I do, Mississippi mud sauce is a must. In the microwave oven, it's a snap. In a small microwave safe mixing bowl, first stir together three quarters cup sugar and one third cup unsweetened cocoa powder. Then stir in one five ounce can of evaporated milk. Now just pop it in the microwave and cook uncovered on high for two to three minutes or till it's boiling. Be sure to stir it at least once during that time. After it's done cooking, stir in a quarter cup of chunky peanut butter, just like this. We'll mix that in real well. And serve it warm over ice cream.
Here are the nutritional information and cooking time comparisons for Mississippi Mud Sauce. And that's it for Cooking Made Microwave Easy. Try all the various techniques you've seen today on your own recipes. All it takes is a little experimenting, so dust off your microwave oven and give it a try. For a quick review of many of the techniques demonstrated today, check the Microminder section next on the tape. Happy microwave cooking and happy eating. Welcome to the Better Homes and Gardens Microminder. In it, you'll find helpful microwave oven cooking hints, techniques, and information. Use it whenever you need a question answered. Simply fast forward your VCR to the information you need. How to determine microwave oven wattage. In a two cup measure, heat one cup of tap water, uncovered on high power, 100%. If the water boils in less than three minutes, your oven probably has 600 watts or more of cooking power. If the water takes longer than three minutes to boil, your oven probably has fewer than 600 watts. Safe test for microwave cookware. Pour one cup of cold water in a two cup measure. Set the measure in the microwave next to the item you're testing for microwave safety. Set your microwave oven on high for one minute. If the water gets hot and the item remains cool, it is microwave safe. If the item gets hot and the water stays cool, don't use the item for micro cooking. Determining microwave oven cooking times. Check a similar microwave oven recipe or reduce conventional cooking times to one quarter to one third and add more cooking time in small increments as needed. Check for doneness often. Selecting microwave power level. For most foods, liquids, fruits, vegetables, and poultry parts, high 100% power works fine. For meats and casseroles, choose medium high 70% power. For breads, cakes, and less tender cuts of meat, use medium 50% power. Why you rotate and stir foods? Microwaves tend to penetrate the outer edge of foods first. So foods need to be stirred, moving hot foods to the inside and cool foods to the outside. Remember, certain areas of the microwave oven receive more energy than others. So rotate foods you cannot stir one quarter to one half turn to assure even cooking. Arranging foods in the microwave oven. Place single items in center of oven. Arrange several items in a ring, leaving center open so energy can penetrate from all sides. Arrange foods with thin or delicate parts, such as fish or drumsticks, so thin areas are in the center. Using aluminum foil in the microwave oven. First, check your owner's manual to see if the use of foil is okay. If it is, use small pieces of foil to reflect microwaves and to help prevent overcooking. Don't let the foil touch the oven walls and don't bend it so foil touches foil. Use of covers. As a general rule of thumb, if you'd cover for conventional cooking, cover for microwave ovens. Lids help trap steam and speed the cooking process. Use of microwave safe paper towels, wax paper and plastic wrap. All three help prevent splattering. Undyed paper towels make handy disposable covers for bacon, breads, rolls, and items with crisp crusts. The paper absorbs moisture. Avoid using for over four minutes on high. Waxed paper works well for cooking poultry with skin on it. It partially traps steam so the poultry skin won't stew and actually helps the browning process. Plastic wrap tightly seals to help steam foods quickly. Be sure to vent to allow excess steam to escape. 